morning, First Love family. I just want to remind you, I love you. I love you. Pastor Ben, Pastor Dave, Pastor Don, Pastor Anna, I think we'd all take a bullet for you. I know I would, without a doubt. I would take a bullet for you. I mean, that's a win-win for me. I get in heaven, and you get protected. <laughs> right? So we're still going to be in Hebrews today, um, and we're going to be talking about discipline. You know, sometimes as a pastor, I have to provide discipline. And it's uncomfortable. Uh, whether it be, hey, why are you outside? The sermon's going on. You should be in the church. That's where you need to be. How do you know that sermon wasn't written particularly for you by the Holy Spirit? What are you doing out here? Put that vape away and get your butt in there and sit down in the seat and listen. This isn't a social event. I don't have too much trouble with that one. But then there's the ones where I have to warn against sexual promiscuity, lasciviousness, um, the things that, as far as sin are concerned, sinners are concerned, uh, the dearest thing to the sinner is lasciviousness and sexuality. And it's hard, man. I know. I know. I wasn't always a Christian. But when we look at the, the intention of God when he's providing correction, we have to understand that he's doing it from the place of a father. So let's go ahead and open up this passage. It, it, it starts in verse 3, Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. If you never receive a word of rebuke or exhortation or correction from the Lord. I don't know. Maybe you're walking perfectly and don't need it. Or maybe God knows you're not listening. That's a big problem in the church. I'm not listening because if I listen, it will cause me to have to look at myself, self-examination in the mirror and see that I'm not right. If I listen openly and with my whole heart, I will see the correction and rebel against it. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. If you endure chastening. But backing up, back to uh, verse um, 4, or back to verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. It's right here, it's asking you, look, check it out. What have you done that even comes close to comparing the suffering of our Savior? You know, there's a lot of people in other countries who can say, yes, I have endured that suffering that the Lord endured. I've been whipped, I've been imprisoned, I've been tortured, and I've been killed. 
I've been killed. Not so much in the United States of America. We are, have been protected because we've lived in a country that is a constitutional republic and honors God. Well, not anymore. Consider him endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So this comparison of ourselves against a God, a Savior, who has hung on the cross on our behalf is the thing that prevents us from becoming weary and discouraged in our souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed. When we think about that, we have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. When we think about that, that's exactly what Jesus did. And yet we who have been set free by his righteousness and his holiness and the fact that he was wounded and crucified have received that gift of salvation. But do we really, really take it to heart daily considering the suffering of the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Have you forgotten the exhortation that speaks to you as sons? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Be glad when the Lord chastens you. Because it says here, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom he loves, he chastens. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And scourges every son whom he receives. A scourging is much like what Jesus uh, uh, suffered at the trial. And this is figurative here in this verse when he's talking about scourging because we don't get scourged by God because that's a whipping like similar to the, the scourging that Jesus received at the hand of the Roman centurion with a whip. But scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is is there whom a father does not chasten? You ever notice that, uh, you know, we have a lot of people in recovery, and I'm sure you have people in your life that have suffered from addiction problems, and, uh, or, or maybe you've had friends in school growing up or kids that you knew whose parents didn't pay any mind to anything they did. They just were kind of running free, and, um, and, and they would tell you, I love that I don't have any uh, parental control or that I'm able to do whatever I want, but really deep down inside they crave discipline. I remember uh, being with a couple guys when I was in seventh grade and there was one kid whose parents just didn't care what he did. He had parties at their house. He had, you know, he smoked pot openly in his room and, and his parents never had a word to say. He'd come in at midnight, two o'clock in the morning. We were young. And, uh, and another friend of ours was like, man, I so envy you. It's like, it's so amazing that you like you don't have anybody telling you what to do. You get to do whatever you want. And that kid, he hung his head. And he said, no, I wish my parents cared. I wish my parents corrected me. I wished my parents chastened me. He didn't use that word because we were too young to know what that word was. But, but if you are without chastening, and this is exactly where this young man was, if you're without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. And this is what that young man felt like. He didn't feel like he was a son because nobody seemed to care to discipline him. It says here, furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. But none, nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I prefer a straight road. 
unless I'm on my bike and, you know, going out to Ortega's or something. But I, I prefer a straight road, just in general in my life. I don't like twists and turns and bumps, and I don't. But what the word is saying here is that it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. The easy travel, the easy ride is the straight line ride. You can see the horizon. You know what's coming in front of you. There's no surprises. And sometimes surprises are good. Sometimes surprises are horrifying. But the fact of the matter is that there's only goodness that comes out of the chastening of the Lord. Only goodness comes out from the confidence that his correction in us is because he loves us. I've never once been uh, corrected or, or disciplined by the Lord where I thought, doggone it, he's mean. Because it was always for a purpose to better me, to draw me in closer to the family of God to show me the error of my ways and to set me right. Because he's never once chastised me without giving me a reason and a solution. He's always going to provide a solution. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. You are a mighty God and we love you. We love you. Please bless the day of everybody who's watched this today. And um, give us your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow, family. Love you a bunch. I was a dead This is First Love Church. Welcome home.